Good evening. Thank you for having me. It's a great honour to be here. My name's Kate Drummond. Uh, I'm a neurosurgeon and I have a disclosure for my talk. I am the antichrist of work-life balance. I'm like all of my ilk. I'm overcommitted, overworked, too hard working, underslept, all of the things. And I started thinking about work-life balance though when I started talking to young students who came to me and they said, I really, really want to be a surgeon, but I'm so worried that I won't have work-life balance, so maybe I won't do something that I think I might love. And I thought, oh, I'm not quite sure that that's a thing, that you shouldn't do something you love because of an abstract concept. And then I started to think about, well, what actually is work-life balance? Does work equal life? Well, it's clearly not true. It's clearly kind of true. I mean, a lot of what we do is our life, social contacts, self-esteem, everything else, but work doesn't equal life. Does work not equal life? Well, that's kind of true. But it's also kind of not true. You know, work is a very big part of what you do. Do you put work in a box and life in a box and never the twain shall meet? Or do you have this magic seesaw where you get just the right amount of work on one side and you get just the right amount of life on the other side and everything is going to be fantastic? So in your own minds, do you all know what your work-life balance is? Or is it kind of something that's really worrying in the back of the mind that maybe you don't have it or it could be better or whatever? Anyway, I think work-life balance is probably one of the most unhelpful modern concepts in the wellness industry. Extremely unhelpful. And I have a much better concept for all of you. The cardboard box. Your life is a cardboard box. The best thing about the cardboard box is you get to put whatever you want in it, in whatever quantity you want. You put a bit of work, put a bit of marathon running, put a bit of children, put a bit of husband, put a bit of church, put a bit of whatever you like. You can put a different amounts of those things in at different times. Sometimes there'll be lots of work in there and not much marathon running, and other times there'll be lots of children in there and not much work. But that's okay. You've got the cardboard box and you get to put whatever you like, stuff it right in there, fill it right up. Make sure that you're getting all, everything out of your cardboard box that you can. Just make sure the right stuff's in it. Now there's the rub though, of course. What is the right stuff to put in the box? I have a few rules. Do not put rubbish in the box. What is rubbish you have to work out for yourselves, okay? If married at, watching Married at First Sight is not rubbish for you, then you fill your box up with that. That's okay. Um, if commuting, is great for you, then commute away. I got rid of two things to get rubbish out of my box. I got rid of television, I got rid of commuting. Seven minutes on foot from my bed to my desk, as long as I don't have to get changed. Got rid of a lot of stuff I didn't need in the box. Whatever it is, whatever it is rubbish, do not put it in the box. How do you decide what's rubbish or what's not? Will it pass the deathbed test? If you think you're going to get to your deathbed and go, oh, I really wished I watched more marriage at first sight, then put it in the box. That's okay. I don't think that's going to happen. But work out what you're going to regret not doing and put it in the box. Put it in the, the, the quantity you want, the balance that you want, put it in the box. But it has to pass the deathbed test. 
you are not special in this. It's really interesting, you know, I work with surgeons, work with doctors, they all think they're very special about work-life balance. This is a problem for everyone. This is not a special doctor problem or a special surgeon problem. If you're an architect trying to, you know, make your way in the world, if you're a lawyer trying to make partner, if you're a mother with four children who also has some aspirations for herself, if you run a 7-Eleven and you're doing the night shift as well as the day shift so that you can send your kids to private schools, it doesn't matter. Everyone is worried about what they're putting in the box. So it can be kind of comforting to think it's not just your problem, it's not such a big problem, just work it out. So just remember, you're not that special in this problem. Another really good way, other than the deathbed test, which is the first rule of what to put in the box, is know your why. Why are you here on this earth? Why are you doing what you're doing? My why is my patience. It's a very doctor kind of thing to say. It doesn't have to be something like that. Your why could be, I just want to feel happy every day. Your why could be, I just want my children to feel happy every day. Or my mother, or my father. Or, you know, I want to contribute to not killing so many cows. Whatever your why is, that's okay. But that will help you to know what to put in the box. The deathbed test and what is my why. I always say that everyone should put some sort of spiritual practice in the box. doesn't matter what it is. I don't really care. It could be any of the religions. It could be marathon running. It could be meditation. It could be whatever. Put some sort of spiritual practice in the box because that will help you to know your why. And it will also help you to understand the deathbed test, having the spiritual practice because it'll give you some time to think about those things that are important to you. So make sure that it's in there, just a little bit, just in the bottom corner, a little bit of spiritual practice in the cardboard box. And one other thing that I find really important when I start to feel overwhelmed about how much is in the, in the box and maybe I need to change the box around is reframe, reframe, reframe. The best reframe in the world, I'm so busy. I have so many opportunities. But you can do that with everything. I've got 14 hours on the plane. Wow, two movies and one rewrite of that paper that I've got to do and probably four hours sleep. Yay. So reframe, reframe, reframe. It helps you to appreciate more some of the things that are in your box. Now, that would be mostly the end of my talk for this. I do it a bit longer sometimes, put a bit of stuff at the beginning about how much stuff's in the box and what I do and everything else. But I was giving this talk and a great medical student, a girl called Shrestha Sherry, said, not everyone's got a nice cardboard box like that at the beginning of your talk. And, you know, I was talking from a place of agency, you know, a place of privilege, a place where I feel like I've got control over my cardboard box. That's not necessarily the case for everyone. So if you've got a cardboard box that's like a little bit battered, might have a hole in the bottom of it, there might be like stuff leaking out the bottom, it might be soggy and you're a bit worried if you pick it up everything's going to fall out, then your job is not to worry about what's in the box, your job is to worry about fixing the cardboard box in whatever way you can because you'll never fix what's in it unless you spend time fixing your own cardboard box. So that's super, super important. So the reason that I really can't stand the idea of work-life balance is because it's such an unhelpful concept to just think that there's two sides of the dyad. Life is much more complicated than that. It's different at every stage in life. There's no fixed point in time where you're going to end up with this special balance. But if you consider yourself as this wonderful conglomeration of things you can do, of things you can achieve, of things that you can give, and see how much you can stuff in the box at different times, then I think that you'll find actually in the end you probably do achieve that wonderful, very exciting nirvana state that we're all supposed to achieve of work-life balance. Thank you very much.